NASDAQ followers and welcome to another edition of NASDAQ Spotlight. My name is Leanne Alfaro. I am a producer and host here at NASDAQ and today it is Equal Pay Day. So to talk about Equal Pay Day and about ladies in particular getting paid what they deserve and what they are worth is founder and CEO of Ladies Get Paid, Claire Wasserman. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so much, Leanne, for having me. So tell me a little bit about Ladies Get Paid. I've been very familiar with your initiative for a few years now, but for anyone unfamiliar. Yeah, sure. So Ladies Get Paid is a career development platform. We help women negotiate for pay and for power at work. We do that through hosting workshops. We've got webinars. We do an annual conference. And I think most importantly, we have a private online network where more than 30,000 women from all over the world are sharing career advice. Right? They have a question about something that's going on, like they're trying to negotiate their salary, they'll jump in and a woman literally across the world will give them advice. And you know, Romania, Oklahoma, San Francisco, everybody's sharing bits and pieces of their own story. So to make it make sense for them, they're basically crowdsourcing that kind of advice and then they're going into the office and you know, actually doing the thing that was recommended to them. Now, the value of a community like this, I, I mean, I can't even begin to imagine to have access to all of these boss women yeah. from all over the world who are all levels of experiences and there's something to trade, you know, like I can, I can share perhaps something about negotiation, perhaps somebody else can share something about getting a job. Yeah, and I think the most important thing here to remember uh, that these women realize is that they're not alone. That's the email I get after every event that we do. It's always the same email is, I thought I was the only one experiencing this. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things that these women are going through at work can feel shameful, right? If they got fired or they're marginalized in some way, they have shame in speaking up about it, especially if they think it's their fault in some way. Mm -hmm. Or maybe even doubting, you know, am I crazy? Did this even happen? Is it discrimination? So having a place where you can commiserate, you know, realize that you're not the only one going through it, sometimes that's enough to be able to go back to work with strength. And then of course, there is the tangible advice that you do need to know, especially if you're gonna be negotiating. Absolutely, so let's talk about negotiation yes. for a little little bit. Um, let's say you are educated, you know exactly how much you should be getting paid, you've done your research for location, your your experience yeah. and your role and you and you say, you know, I'm not getting paid enough right. and I know how much I should be getting paid. Right. What should women kind of take into account before going into the boardroom to sure. ask for Well, something I'm glad that you just said was about contextualizing your rate. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, I found this rate out there. It's okay, but it has to be your industry, location, the size of the company, right? Everything is contextualized. Um, one thing I do want to mention before I go into some advice yeah. is it's actually not about getting paid what you deserve. Even yeah. though that's our slogan, even though <laughs> that's, that's what I say. Screen. Tell okay. us more. Right, so I'm gonna tell you that you should get paid what you deserve, but you're not gonna tell your boss that, mm. right? It's not about fairness, even though it should be. It's about that you've proven that you're a top performer and therefore you should get top dollar. It's really all about what you've shown them that you can do and how that's impacted the bottom line. How much money have you brought in the company? Mm. And that can be kind of tricky for people who aren't in sales roles or maybe who don't have this direct connection to the dollars, but that also means then you need to do your research. You need to figure out how the work you do impacts another team that impacts another team that does bring in the money. So it isn't just, here's the money that I did the research on and I should get it and I deserve it and I worked hard. That's a given. It's really about what you've done, the impact it's had on the company, the bottom line, and even how you've done your work. If you saw that it inspired people, if you got your team to be productive, right? That's saving money for the company if people are more efficient and more productive. So you can also couch what you've done in terms of that as well. Um, but yes, the market research is key. I also think going in and telling them all the places that you did your research. So the websites that you looked at, but perhaps most importantly, who did you talk to? Make sure you talk to at least five people and make sure that they're white men also, right? They're the ones who are getting paid the most. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, that there are recruiters and headhunters that you've spoken to. You know, maybe you can go back to your college. If you went to college, the alumni network or the career resource network, try to find as many different sources to figure out your salary. Not just that it'll help you, but you can also just specifically cite, this is where I found out what I should be paid. It is not random uh, and that you have, you know, you have evidence to back it up. Absolutely, and I love that you address th that, you know, it's important to do your market uh, research, but also to be very specific to yes. the role that you have. Nobody else 
likely, has the exact same role that you have and is executed the exact same way that you have. Right, so. and I do want to mention for, for people who maybe don't have traditional roles, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and they're doing market research, but they're just not finding anything out there that seems to make sense for them. A good example would be for me, a couple years ago, I had a job where the title was Master of Ceremonies, you know, <laughs> which like I loved on my business card. Because, Where'd you have Master of Ceremonies? Uh, I was in a small startup. Oh, wow. This is what happens when these companies are trying to recruit mm -hmm. young talent, they'll give you a cool title, you know, it's a great conversation starter, but then when it's time to figure out how much you want to get paid for either your raise or your next job, when I'm Googling master ceremonies, it's like, what, what are you going to find? So the advice that I would give to people who are having trouble finding out what they should charge is really look at the percentage of what you do. How much of your time is dedicated to account management? right, or creative direction, or, or things that do have traditional titles where you can find what the market rate is, and see, all right, in a given week, a month, in a year, maybe you're spending 10% of your time on administration, right? Mm -hmm. So when you do go out there and try to figure out what to charge, it can kind of be a conglomerate of all those different things. So it's not a formula, right? This isn't an exact science, mm -hmm. but you need to be able to make a compelling case. And I do want to emphasize that. It is about the case that you make. Right. So again, when you go in there, you're able to say, here's how I came up with it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not random. You didn't just make it up. It isn't what you think you deserve. Oh, and most importantly, the amount that you charge should never, never, never be based on what you were paid previously. And that's kind of a big realization for a lot of people. It was for me. Right. Oftentimes when we go into our next job, we're thinking, I want to get paid maybe 15% more than I was paid last year. Yeah. Or we go in and, and when they ask us how much we want to be paid. I mean, perhaps yeah. part of that reason, though, is because employers still ask in some states to this day, yes. what was your previous salary? Right, right. Which is something that, I mean, certain bills yes. <laughs> that are being brought to Congress would ban. Right, right. There's, I think, about 13 states right now that have what's called a salary history ban. Uh, this is something that can be legislated on both a state and a city level. So there may be some states where that's not the policy but cities within that state ha have made it so. So for those of you who don't know what a salary history ban is, it essentially makes it illegal for an employer to ask their prospective employee, how much did you get paid before? And the reason that is, is assuming that marginalized group, groups right out of college are getting paid less, if they keep getting paid based on what they made before, it compounds the gap. Right. How will they ever be able to make that up? So the thought is, if we just get rid of that question entirely and pay you based on what the market says and not what you got paid before, then hopefully that gap should correct itself. Uh, I don't know why this is so controversial. I mean, if companies want to attract the best talent and retain the best talent, then they should be paying market rate. Uh, but anyway, something I was just going to mention, for anybody who's considering lying, when they're asked how much were you paid before, a lot of folks may think, should I tell the truth? Maybe I should add 20%. Mm -hmm. Never lie. You don't want to start the relationship off in that way. I think that you don't have to lie. You can tell them how much you got paid, right? But tell them why that is not relevant to what you're asking for now. Mm -hmm. That you have done so much since then. You've gone above and beyond. You know, you've brought in so much money for your company. And also, maybe it's not market rate. So quickly pivot to that. This is what I got paid before, but in my market research, it, it's no longer relevant to what I'm asking for now. So if anybody takes anything away from this is, is just don't lie about what you are getting paid. But hopefully for any employers out there, stop asking people. It's, it's not gonna help your staff uh, be right. happy or wanna work for you if, if you're putting them on the spot like that. Right, right. And now this uh, negotiation or asking for a raise, does it only come once a year or every time you Ooh. enter a board, boardroom that you prepare? or? You, I mean, you recently worked on a campaign that said, know your worth, show your worth, yes. right? Like, how can people consistently work yeah. on showing their worth so that it's not just the moment that you have to step into the boardroom right. and have this conversation? Yeah, I'm really glad that you asked that. I think so many women believe that if they work hard and put their heads down, uh, that they'll be recognized. Mm -hmm. That's just not how this works. You know, you have to be able to not just do the work, but to talk about the work. But also for a lot of women, that feels like we're bragging, right? That we're self-promotional. If what you're doing is about impacting the company, you're helping the company, why would that be bragging, right? You're telling that story. But to your point, should you wait till your annual review? No, because it's too late. They probably have already decided what promotion you're getting or what raise you're getting or not getting, right? So how do you talk about your wins throughout the year? Every time you have a meeting with your boss, 
And by the way, you should be proactively making sure that you're meeting with your manager if they're not the one who's doing those one-on-ones with you. Make sure that you're meeting with them. Tell them what you did last week. Tell them your accomplishments, right? Get their feedback on it, right? Talk to them explicitly about the fact that you wanna be a leader here. Right. Using those words is basically planting the seeds for the whole year that, oh, this is somebody who wants to be rewarded here. They've shown me what they've done, right? In an organic, authentic way. Uh, and the other piece of advice that I would have is when you have a really big win, that is the time to go into your boss's office and talk to them about getting into leadership. Right. So it's not that you're marching in there after the win and saying, I'd like to talk about a raise, right? right? Cause that's not the time, <laughs> but going in there and saying, you know, I did this work. I'm really excited about it. Um, I want to make sure I'm on track for leadership here and I want you to help me get there. Right. And also even explicitly asking them, what do you need to see from me in order for that promotion or that raise? Get it in their words so you can make sure that you're leveraging that when it is time to go in and make the official case. Absolutely. And I should mention everything that you have said about, you know, showing your worth and asking for a raise, it increases that level of transparency. Absolutely. Which I'm sure just makes the whole process so much right easier and less painful. Right, and also help them help you. Mm -hmm. Don't wait until you have some kind of crisis. I mean, I guess the, the whole point of this is just constant communication all the time. Right. Uh, and when you bring them your wins, it should be kind of positioned in the, well, I wanna make sure I'm helping the company. I wanna get your feedback that I'm doing the right thing, right? So it's not just you marching in there again and like bragging and wa marching right. out. It, it should be part of a larger conversation you have with them. Absolutely. And should there be a hard and fast number? Ooh. <laughs> Good question. Okay. So when you Google this, there's people with different uh, opinions out there. Uh, I don't really think there's a wrong way as long as you pivot quickly to what you've actually done and what the impact is. I think that if you want to say a big number, so I should mention there's a pay band. This is what it's called, right? So, you know, HR is figuring out ranges that each person fits into when it makes, you know, when they're thinking about compensation. Okay. When you're looking at your range, you're going to go at the top. You're coming in with the very top or maybe even a little bit above. When you say that big number, you can also kind of soften it a little bit, caveat it with, but I'd like to talk about the scope of the role, what you're looking for, right? And I'm sure we can come up with a number together that is fair for everybody. Hmm. And I think the, the words here that I want to focus on are together, right? This isn't a back and forth, Not you us, win. you versus them. No, no, you're on the same team. You've obviously gotten this far that they're invested in making it work, right? Think about how they're going to have to go back to their boss and tell them what happened. They don't want to lose you. Absolutely. So you're saying together, right? And you're using the word fair, right? Also, if you want to mention a, a competitor company and how much they're paying, you know, that you understand your worth in the market, mm -hmm. but you want to be there. So again, big number, here's why I'm asking for that number. It is rooted in the market, but I'm sure together we can figure out something that is fair. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do want to say a range, and that's totally fine, you can also say, but of course I'll be asking for the top of the range because I'm a top performer, uh, you know, and you can have a little bit of humor around it as well. Uh, but the last point of all of this is you need to know your bottom line. So even if you give them a range, make sure that you are very clear on where you're not gonna go below. So maybe even in that range, don't tell them the very bottom of the range, kind of tell them the mid and the top. Oh, that's Almost as if the mid oh, is like your that. bottom line, but it not, it's not actually. That's interesting to hear because I've heard so many kind of guidelines around that. I've heard like a 15% rule, but I, I like that there's a lot of flex room. Yes within within yes. what you're saying within the guidelines yeah never just like drop a number be like here's my number yep. context everything's context Absolutely. And, and done with a smile and unfortunately women have to do this even more you know the chance that we're going to be looked as as aggressive when we're simply being assertive mm -hmm. that's a real thing and particularly for women of color I hate telling women to smile but you do need to figure out when you are being strong how you can also soften it mm -hmm. it's it's exhausting, and again, I hate having to give that advice, but if anybody is interested in exploring how to kind of balance the strong with the soft, I would research what's called the double bind. And this is something that Sheryl Sandberg talks about in Lean In. This is essentially when a woman acts outside of kind of the social norm of what we expect a woman to act. So we expect women to be kind of nice, don't disrupt, accommodate others. And when you go in to negotiate, you are going in there asking for something you believe you deserve, right? Yep. And that yep. is a time when you could possibly be looked at as greedy, but never, never internalize that. You're not being greedy, but it has to be done again with 
with a smile and saying that you appreciate the opportunity but here's the number I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. No, absolutely. You have to watch out for the bottom line, but obviously be able to have a carry out a conversation yes. so you can have that togetherness. Exactly. Of being able to come to that final number. Now talk to me a little bit about history mm -hmm. because we're at a point where we have an act that we've been trying to sign to get into Congress for since, since the 90s, right? We had the 60s equal pay act, but since the 90s we've had this other bill mm -hmm. that would further push us to like fairness Paychecks, right? Fairness and paychecks, um, called the Fairness Paycheck Act, and that hasn't been passed. Where do you think we are, and what would it take to kind of level the playing field? Because sure. it's very clear. I mean, ladies get paid. The reason that you exist is because the playing field is not level. It's not level when it comes to men versus women, um, and especially on equal pay day is such an important yeah. day to note that. But when you slice and dice it by disability, by race, oh, yeah. uh, where you come from, Absolutely. socioeconomic status, that is an even more jarring of a gap. Sure, sure. So this, we're probably getting some comments right now on this. Mm -hmm. Many people do not believe that the wage gap even exists. So this day of equal pay is just mythical for, for many people. Um, you know, I wanna acknowledge that the wage gap, it does change based on the factors that you just mentioned. So for certain groups of people, the gap may be quite small, and I will acknowledge that, okay? But Hispanic women make 55 cents to the dollar. Black women make 63 cents to the dollar. How can you justify that, right? And I mean, the number that we'll see circulating today is more like 79 cents exactly. to the dollar, right? Yeah. It doesn't represent all of this. Right, and we've made some progress, we have. Uh, but I just wanna put this in perspective. In 1963, the Equal Pay Act was passed. This was the first kind of legislation that even um, discussed equal pay. At that time, the wage gap was 59 cents to the dollar. So we've made progress. But again, that was for white women, 59 cents to the dollar in 1963. Hispanic women, still 55 cents to the dollar. So the thing that I keep urging people to remember is no matter how far that we may have progressed as a society, I think we've really only gotten so far as the people who are still struggling the most among us. So even if you feel okay in what you're getting paid, you have a responsibility, I think, to advocate for others. So, so I wanted to mention that, uh, 1963, all right, we've got the equal pay, then we saw progress happening, and then we saw Title VII, and this was saying, you know, you can't have any kind of sex discrimination in hiring and promoting, so we're good in 1963. But then it takes till 2009 for us to see legislation that helps women get paid equally. Mm -hmm. And this is the Lilly Ledbetter, Ledbetter Act. Uh, it was the first act that Obama signed when he became president. Uh, and this basically says you have more than 150 days to file a lawsuit if you believe you were discriminated against in pay, right? It used to be if you didn't sue within 150 days of discovering that you were being underpaid, oh well, you can't sue. 2009 made it so that you could sue, passed mm -hmm. that. Uh, 2010, Obama uh, created a commission that helped enforce those laws, equal pay laws. Uh, he got people from the Department of Labor, people from the Department of Justice. So he was demonstrating that equal pay is not just about dollars in pockets, but it's affecting the workforce as a whole. And when you see women being paid equally, you're seeing less poverty, right? And then you're seeing less reliance on social services, right? You're seeing money added to the GDP. So again, again, I want everybody to remember, it's not just about women and it's not just about money. It's about all of us doing better. And then fast forward, uh, we get to uh, 2016, uh, and this is really exciting. Um, Obama passes this law that says companies that have over 100 employees must report what they are paying their employees. Demographic, right? Has to be broken down by demographic. Fantastic. We don't have that act anymore. Since the current administration took office, that law has been suspended. So there is no reporting on pay. So how can you fix a problem if you don't even know really what that problem is? Mm -hmm. And also the nuances of that issue. And some of this is a bit complicated, but other times it's a little bit more straightforward. Like the fact that Salesforce, they did a pay audit, they discovered that there were discrepancies in pay and they corrected it. Other companies have done this as well. Companies that have multi, multi millions of, if not billions of dollars to correct pay. Is it complicated? Eh, is it simple? I, you know, if you have the resources to take charge, then you should take charge. Right. Uh, and then the other piece of this is, is something I'm excited about, is you are seeing more companies adopt salary transparency. And so this is allowing their employees to be able to see who's getting paid what. Mm -hmm. You might think, well, that's gonna breed resentment or people will get angry. 
all of this, if you contextualize it and you get people to understand why and how they're being compensated, it allows them to take that information and use it to do better. If you tell me what I need to do to get to the next level, right, then I will do it. Does that mean I need to take classes to, you know, gain skills or whatever it is? So, you know, if a company is imagining or wondering if they should do salary transparency, know that when they do that, and I think they should, HR needs to have a big conversation both to the entire company, but also allow individual employees to have that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and now they don't have to guess if it's fair or not. They're not going to gossip. They're not going to build resentment. You know, to have a clear understanding of pay structure and what they can do to move up. I'm not sure why that would be a bad thing. Absolutely. No, completely agree with you. And I like that you mentioned what companies can do. It really get, puts the agency yeah. in the companies and the employees, especially those leading at the very top. Yes. And if you are not leading at the very top, because most of the women we work with are between 26 and 36, so these are women basically middle management looking to get into director positions, a lot of times they think, well, I'm waiting for leadership to do this. Like, I, I don't have the ability right. to so do this. So what can they do? What can they do? And I always say, make the business case and you absolutely can when there's diversity in leadership companies make 15 percent more mckinsey has reports on this mm -hmm. there's lots of studies on this so the first thing i would do is find a coalition of other people in your office and please include men definitely include men uh, and go as this coalition with all of your research make a presentation treat this almost like a business proposal you're asking for budget and here are the returns that your company can expect to see if they do correct pay if they do promote marginalized groups if they do have paid family leave none of this is a favor it's not charity it's not just about fairness it's about money right and that's how you make your case absolutely Claire, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Couldn't think of a better guest for Equal Pay Day. <laughs> thank you. And NASDAQ followers, please stay tuned. We'll have more coverage coming to you from Financial Literacy Month. And for now, that was Claire Wasserman, founder and CEO 